Hi everybody, this is a video about heavy metals. Someone recently asked a question on one of my other videos um, saying something to the effect of, um, are there any, actually, well, let's just see what it says here. Um, do I think that heavy metals can be redistributed throughout the body if not detoxed um, pro promptly? Um, so it's a great question. Thanks for the question. Um, as per usual, nothing that I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. And if you need medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. So this is a really good question. It's a topic that um, I've certainly heard come up um, over over the years. Um, you know, I've been doing chelation therapy, i.e., heavy metal binding slash removal therapy, for probably about eleven or twelve years, and um, it's so it's something that I've you know been hearing about this concern over the course of that time, and. <clears throat> Um, I, I think that, this is, to be perfectly frank, um, I think it's really hard to tell whether or not there might be a redistributing effect happening when heavy metals are removed. So, you know, the idea is that heavy metals um, maybe get inside of the cells, or I've heard some uh, folks say that maybe they just get into the space kind of between the cells, so they're kind of more like around the outside of the cell, creating, you know, they create a ruckus or create, create a problem wherever they happen to be. But uh, anyways, they're, they're in the tissues, they're not just floating around in the bloodstream. And so then we come along with our chelating agents like our DMSA or EDTA or DMPS or whatnot, and then that binds onto the metal, it hauls it out, dumps it into the bloodstream, and then the blood goes to the lip, but you know, the blood brings the uh, metal chelation, chelator complex to the liver, the liver detoxifies it, and then it gets hopefully mostly excreted through the bowels, but some will get you know, reabsorbed back into the blood and get hopefully filtered out through the kidneys. And so the concern is that if the um, metals are not detoxified promptly, then some of those metals might just kind of start free floating around in the bloodstream. You know, they wiggle free from the chelator um, or somehow get reabsorbed into the body, maybe while they're waiting for that next bowel movement to pass them out into the world. Um, and then from the bloodstream, they might get redistributed somewhere else. So we haul that metal out, say from a, a fat cell or a muscle cell or some place where you don't want them, but they're not going to cause nearly as much damage as in a more vital tissue like the brain or the eyeballs or something. But then the concern is that, okay, we hauled it away from that muscle cell, then some of it got reabsorbed and then redistributed, and now it's you know going into the brain or going into the eyes or going into the heart or someplace that it's going to potentially be a lot more harmful. So that's the, the kind of underlying concern about this redistrib redistribution effect. Um, clinically, I really don't know how we'd be able to tell if that's actually happening um, because the way to my mind and, and if anybody knows differently please post in the comment section below I'd love, love to hear about it um, but to my mind the only way to really know that is that you'd have to kind of have like a baseline brain biopsy to see how much mercury is in the brain at a given point in time and then you do the chelation and do another brain biopsy after doing maybe a few chelations to see did the levels of mercury actually increase in the brain because I don't know how else you'd be able to tell where the metals are actually hanging out in the body unless you're actually biopsying those tissues and of course nobody's going to do that uh, I don't believe there have been any studies done um, looking at that uh, again if there have been please let me know but <clears throat> I, I think that's the only way you could really tell if there is a redistribution effect going now or happening now now the like in terms of really, really objective data. Now, the other way we might be able to tell that is if a person, say, doing chelation and then suddenly they start developing brain fog that they never had before, and then even when the treatment stops, the brain fog persists, or during chelation, a patient gets, you know, visual disturbances, you know, they have double vision or clouded vision or, or blurry vision or whatnot, and then even after the chelation is done, it doesn't go away. It's like, oh no, maybe we did redistribute metals to the eyeballs in that case, or, um, you know, if a patient starts getting joint pain that just doesn't go away even after treatment stop, maybe the metals are redistributed to the joints. So clinically, that would be some compelling uh, evidence, uh, clinical evidence, to suggest that maybe there is a redistribution happening. Um, what I can say from my own experience, having uh, either administered myself or asked my tireless, fearless residents to administer these for me, um, you know, I've been uh, responsible, shall we say, for thousands of chelation treatments over the course of time. And it's been very, very rare, actually, that patients feel worse after chelation. And when it does happen, it's usually a fairly transient thing. They might feel a bit more tired. The occasional patient I've seen has had some skin um, outbreaks. The very occasional patient has had some digestive tract related issues. It's generally pretty um, pretty rare to see side effects in the first place. And when they happen, they're very temporary. Um, you know, they may be worst case scenario in a really, really sensitive patient. Side effects might last for say a week afterwards, but <clears throat> then we typically just lower the, but then they, they go away. Um, we usually lower the dose on the next treatment and we just kind of lower the dose, you know, until they find a, you know, usually we lower the dose way down and then that's well tolerated. So like, you know, this dose caused a flare. So we, next dose is way lower. So that dose is fine. The next dose a little bit higher, that's fine. Next dose is fine. And oftentimes, 
sometimes we get back to the full dose and it's fine, but maybe it's like, oh no, that caused a flare again, so we just stick with like a three quarters dose or something like that. But I haven't seen any lasting symptoms or side effects that have come from, uh, from uh, you know, doing chelation. So in my experience, it seems to be a very, very safe therapy. I know that there are certain uh, folks out there, certain clinicians out there, there are certain online groups where they basically talk about chelation therapy as if it's the worst thing in the world. It's like human, the human version of kryptonite basically, um, that it causes like tons of side effects and flare ups and it's crazy dangerous. Um, and, and so I'm aware that there are those opinions out there and I can't speak to the experience of those clinicians because I don't know what they've seen or what they've experienced in practice. But what I've seen in my extensive experience, I, I don't believe that there is an, a meaningful redistribution effect happening or a toxic effect on the body. Um, and then from my many colleagues, like my colleagues here at my clinic that do lots of chelation therapy, colleagues here, there, and um, everywhere, you know, across North America, maybe in other parts of the world that I've talked to, it's not like, oh yeah, chelation, like it's just, it's like, you know, Russian roulette, you know, with, you know, with your patient's health, like not, nothing could be further from what, from the truth of that. It's a very, um, a, uh, generally speaking, when it's done um, appropriately and with the right supports and things like that, it, it seems to be a very safe um, therapy. So again, that's my opinion and that's been my experience up to this point. So thank you for the question. Uh, if anybody has any questions uh, beyond that on this topic or anything else, just post in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer as soon as possible.